welcome everybody. This is uh, Sivan Arena. I would like to welcome you to this session, uh, Recognizing Excellence, which I'm hosting with uh, Doug Phillips. Hi, Doug. Hello, everyone. Um, so this uh, session is intended to share information about AETG awards and Actual awards and regional conferences awards, and also to discuss best practices for nominating and possibly uh, self nominations for deserving colleagues. So, the agenda for today is um, um, brief introductions. Uh, We'll cover the ATG awards, we'll cover actual awards, regional conference awards, and the nomination process. And we hope to have some time for question and answers. And the whole webinar hopefully won't last longer than 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, so as you know, I'm the current ATG president, um, and I'm here with Doug Phillips, who is the um, President elect vice president, and we thought it might be a good practice to get in touch with our members and to share some information in this format. Uh, as you know, we have a number of ATG awards, and we have a number of awards that are recognized at our annual award ceremony at Actful which uh, awards that are presented in conjunction with our partners. And we also have awards that recognize um, research um, via our two journals. So the um, maybe most important awards for ATG are the Outstanding German Educator Award, the Friend of German Award, and as you know, we recognize centers of excellence. On the second slide, you see uh, four additional awards, German Embassy Teacher of Excellence Award, the Flach Award, Checkpoint Charlie Foundation Teacher Award, and Goethe Institute ATG Certificate of Merit. Um, and we have the Max Carter Prize for Best Article in the German Quarterly. We have the Best Article Prize in the Unterrichtspraxis Teaching German. and a German Quarterly Graduate Student Paper Award. We are currently in uh, basically full swing, uh, accepting nominations for these awards, and most of the uh, nominations are due um, May 31st this year. Uh, Doug, would you like to add anything? Yes, if we could go back actually to the the first big slide with the ATG, the Outstanding German Educator Award and Friend of German Award and Centers of Excellence. I'd like to speak to these points a bit, having spoken with people who are on the awards committee, the AATG awards committee. I know many of the members there really appreciate very finely developed um, dossiers or application packets, nomination packets for all of these awards. And all of these things are marvelous, marvelous awards that really do uh, draw out or recognize, draw out recognition for our outstanding colleagues that we have. For anyone who wants to apply for one of these awards, I would say, having looked at the whole application process, it takes some time to fill those things out. So. That's a really good thing to do uh, is just plan ahead and start taking things in early and do that. The uh, centers of excellence are, um, they do indeed recognize outstanding German programs and those centers of excellence are not limited to one of each level per year or anything like that. Um, however, center of excellence, it should really be a very fine, outstanding program that way. Thanks, Doug. Um, and we already mentioned that uh, the ATG Awards Co uh, Committee uh, reviews the nominations, and um, maybe we should add um, that chapters typically have awards committees um, at the state level. 
but it's also acceptable if individuals nominate colleagues directly to the ATG Awards Committee. Moving on, we want to encourage uh, everybody to nominate colleagues for actual awards. And the way this works is because actual awards um, nominations have to be submitted from member organizations. So the way this works is that chapters or individual members nominate or suggest colleagues to be nominated for any of these actual awards. So if you are interested in that, you would submit names to the ATG Awards Committee and the ATG Awards Committee then um, takes a look at everybody who's nominated and uh, pulls together the nomination and suggests uh, and submits it to the actual website. The reason why we included this here in the presentation is because we want to encourage everybody to consider colleagues who would be good nominees for these actual awards. And in the past, if you have attended the actual awards ceremony in November, you know that we have had some really good success in um, recognizing our ATG members with these actual awards. I think it's too long to go through all these slides. Um, I included, however, I wanted to show that there are many different awards for many different purposes, just to give everybody an idea um, what are the different uh, awards that uh, our work can get recognition for. Um, if I might jump in right there with those awards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and nominations, uh, I would really strongly encourage anybody who knows of anyone, you might think, oh, this person would be really well qualified for that award. Go ahead and send that information simply to our AATG headquarters in Cherry Hill, um, and they can get the information to the right people on the awards committee and everything, and um, let everyone know that nominations are in the process or that people have been suggested for those awards. So don't let a, uh, uh, perhaps I don't know where to send this, stop you from nominating somebody or suggesting a nomination, I'll put it that way. And again, if you're interested already this year to contribute to this effort, um, keep in mind that the deadline for submission is approaching. It's May 28th, so a little bit earlier than ATG. Um, so please get in touch as soon as possible. Now, another area where I think we can uh, do a lot is the regional awards. So we have five regional um, conferences or councils uh, on language teaching, and you probably are members there, you probably have presented at the conferences, maybe you have been an officer or are currently an officer at one of these organizations. So why not um, take a look at uh, the kinds of awards the regional conferences offer and uh, consider nominating deserving colleagues. And I think the reason why this is important is because uh, there is, of course, maybe the highest recognition and definitely the most visible recognition of our work is the Teacher of the Year. And as you know, we have had a wonderful success recently. We have Katrina Griffin, who is the first um, German teacher to receive this recognition just uh, two or three years ago. And we have had finalists uh, for the Teacher of the Year uh, nomination. Uh, and this is a structured uh, nomination, so you have to win, uh, I believe, the regional award before you can be considered for the actual teacher of the year, so uh, it's definitely something to think about. Um, Doug, did you want to add anything? Yes, I was just going to add that each person definitely has to win the regional from one of the regional conferences. 
but they have to start at the state level. And this is a great spot for our chapter, our state chapters to nominate outstanding German educators for um, recognition as a various state language teacher of the year. And then those state language teachers, when they win that position, <clears throat> pardon me, then those people go on to the regional conference and that's where the regional conferences then select a regional uh, chapter, uh, pardon me, teacher of the year. And those regions are the ones that then nominate up to the actual national language teacher of the year. It is a process, but we have a large number of really outstanding um, educators, colleagues in the German teacher world here in the US. And I think a lot of people could be nominated for the positions that would lead up to the full nomination process for the actual teacher of the year. Thank you. So let's now that we know uh, about the many awards that are out there, uh, ATG, actual state, regional conferences, let's address uh, some of the issues that might prevent us from nominating colleagues, from seeing through the nominations, uh, and that is what is involved in uh, nominating colleagues for these various awards. Uh, basically addressing the question, okay, it is the end of the semester, nearly the end of the school year, and now I am supposed to pull together a nomination. So what I tell my own students when they consider applying for something, I say, well, first you check the eligibility requirements and make sure that uh, you are really hitting the necessary requirements to be nominated and to have success with your nominations because not every award is for everybody and that's uh, probably pretty clear. Um, in the second step, make sure that the dossier you are submitting fulfills all the requirements and some of the uh, things sound maybe um, simple or self-understood, but I think it already begins with the length of the dossier. If the requirement is 20 pages, then that's what it is, and it doesn't mean 22 or 25, and that is still acceptable. So in a way, the requirement stated on the different uh, websites, and I included the links at the end of this um, PowerPoint presentation. I think that it's helpful to kind of guide us through the process of what is required for the dossier. Make sure the dossier is well organized. Make sure you're hitting the points that are outlined in uh, the nomination application process. And the last point, obviously, if the colleague you're nominating is not a good fit for the award, then maybe it's time to reconsider and to say maybe someone is a better fit for another award. Because as you have seen, there are many different types of awards um, that are being offered. And um, I also wanted to point you to the fact that, for example, on our own website, the MTG website, uh, the nomination process, in my mind, typically includes the nominee because the person you're nominating, he or she knows their work best and they know who are, for example, excellent people to write the letters, the supporting letters for the dossier. So I think this needs to be a joint project between the person nominating and the person who is being nominated. Doug, I'm sure you have something to add um, to that point, too. I was going to say I agree very completely, Susanna, with what you just said there. Uh, last year, I was nominated for the ACTFL Award for Excellence in Foreign Language Instruction using technology in the K through 12 category. And um, it was no secret that I had the nomination. And um, 
I had to pull together all of my materials. I also found the people to write the recommendation letters for me for that um, dossier, for that application proc packet. Uh, to that point, I would recommend to anybody doing a nomination, try to get really, really strong letters of nomination uh, and read over the letters. Uh, if the letters don't seem to be up to snuff, um, find somebody else who is willing to write a much, much stronger letter. Uh, it could be perhaps for the nomination for ACTFL, I had to have three letters of nomination, so I got one from my superintendent, my principal, and my department chair. Uh, when I received the award, I can tell you this, the, uh, the chairman of the committee that selected the award leaned over and he just said to me, your letters of recommendation were really very impressive. It was obvious those people know you well. I believe that helps when those things really come through in the entire dossier, when the candidate just shines through. Is this this person? Is this the total packet, the total product, so to say, of this person? That needs to shine through to the committee, whatever level of committee it is. Thanks, thanks Doug. I, I totally agree. I think, you know, the reason uh, why some uh, colleagues are maybe considered for awards and are successful are because of that communication piece. And I think that many of us do excellent work and are used to maybe communicating with students and teachers and parents, but maybe we're not used to communicating at that level, but to recognize that um, how to ask for a letter of support by providing the relevant information, what the award is about and how your own work or the work of the nominee fits into that uh, letter, into that award category. I think some of these um, things can be um, helped if we communicate clearly what kind of award we're being nominated for or we are nominating someone else. Um, I want to maybe say one thing about um, if some of you are participating here and you're thinking, oh, I've been nominated and I haven't been successful, and what should I do now? And obviously, um, it doesn't feel good to not receive an award, but first of all, I would like to say that um, at least for the ATG awards or the uh, the awards that are being recognized at the ATG awards ceremony, I know that um, it is a very competitive. So um, unfortunately, not everybody can receive the award uh, in the year they are being nominated. But already being nominated is, of course, um, a wonderful accomplishment and should be a recognition of one's work. And the other suggestion I would have is, if possible, ask your, the person who nominates you to resubmit the dossier the following year. Uh, the work has already been done, the dossier already exists, and it might be a matter of updating it. And sometimes, in fact, uh, more often than not the second time around, um, the nomination is successful. So those would be my my kind of final thoughts in that structured presentation. Doug, is there anything else you wanted to add? I was just going to say on a re, uh, resubmission of an application or a dossier, uh, be sure that everything is updated within those materials. I um, I was nominated for an award in another organization and didn't get it and then went back in and was renominated. Um, but I had to update everything that I was uh, listing and even the letters of application. I believe any nominate, any awards committee definitely favors letters or prefers letters that are very fresh, very up to date, as opposed to some general letter or some letter that even might contain the phrase like, please select this person for this award in 2013. 
um, some other year, something like that. That doesn't come across well. Um, I just know that's how it is. So it's all for me. Thank, thanks, Doug. So at this point, um, here's our contact information. And as Doug already said, please, if you have uh, nominations, suggestions for colleagues who should be nominated, especially for these actual awards that have to be submitted through ATG, uh, certainly contact um, uh, ATG headquarters as well. And as promised, uh, we didn't want to take that much of your time. We know it's it's busy. Everybody is very busy. So, but we do have some time for question and answers. I will stop my screen share now. Um, we will post this um, on the website somewhere, and you have uh, links then to the different uh, websites with awards nominations. So, if you have any questions. Uh, that you would like to ask, please uh, feel free to go ahead now. Um, yes, I, I have a question. Can can you hear me? Yes, this thank is you. I can hear you. Yeah, thank right. you. So um, I I was wondering exactly what the role of the executive committee on the state level is. Um, so I'm currently the president for Northern Illinois, and I would like to nominate some people. Um, and I'm, I will be, I imagine I'm, I'll be writing the nominating letter for those people. Uh, I'm assuming I cannot write. I mean, that will be basically my my contribution, and I'll, I will encourage them to get all the materials together. Um, I do have a question, just about the policy regarding the executive committee. Now, would it be possible to nominate someone who's currently on the state executive committee or should these be people that are no longer on the committee or not on the committee? And I guess that also relates to the awards committee that you had mentioned, how an awards committee on a state level is generally put together. I mean, is that, is that comprised of members of the executive committee who volunteer to, to be on that committee or how, how do you see that? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for the question. I I think I um, so it seems to me there are two parts to the question. Yes. The last part is more the organizational structure mm -hmm. of the uh, the state chapter, right? So mm -hmm. the relationship between the officers, the executive committee, and the awards committee, mm -hmm. uh, if there is an awards committee. And the first part of the question was can current state officers uh, be nominated. Right. Um, I, 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 we have uh, Keith as well participating in the, uh, in the webinar, so I'm always grateful for his expertise in terms of, you know, this, what do the bylaws say, et cetera. So I'm always a little hesitant before I plunge in. It seems to me that Current officers uh, certainly can be nominated. And Absolutely. You, oh, okay. as the <laughs> chapter president, can certainly write nomination letters. I I think one of the reasons why Doug and I thought it's important to host this webinar is because we wanted to encourage our members to um, share the joy and spread the burden. So hopefully. Uh, even, quote unquote, just a member, so even someone who is not a current officer would consider shepherding through a nomination, just so that the officers who are already very busy don't get, you know, this kind of bur uh, burnout. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody should be helping and working together in a chapter to make these nominations possible. Um, now to the last question, to, or to the, to the second question in terms of uh, chapter structure and organization, not all chapters have awards committees, um, it seems to me. And I believe, and again here, Keith, please feel free to jump in. I believe there's nothing um, that requires chapters to have an awards committee. 
So certainly uh, the executives um, or the, the, the officers can uh, nominate and shepherd to the nomination. I would just add that that's all governed by each and every chapter's bylaws. And I'm not aware of any chapter that re requires that or has any stipulation that would bar, um, you know, the I'm, very few chapters have uh, awards committees. Um, and those that do, I do not believe have any real strong structures. Am I just to say that the committee exists? Well, thank you. That helps a lot, actually. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions that we can address? Well, if there are no more questions, I will take this as a good sign that we will receive lots of uh, nominations for ATG and ACTFOL awards and that Everybody is very active on uh, the chapter level to nominate colleagues for state and regional awards. And I wish you much success. And I look forward to receiving, well, not me personally, but ATG headquarters and the awards committee is looking forward to receiving dossiers and nominations. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye-bye.